Greetings, folks, and welcome back to the Shell Touch channel today. Oh, vey. I am back in the studio. And look at this. I have a few, uh, pilgrim degrees more on the wall. Mm hmm? Yeah. Could say it was a quite epic summer. It was. Did you miss me? I know I missed you. Granted, there have been a few videos since I've returned, but those I've recorded before I left. So this is me. This is me off the Camino. Back. Not so fresh back, but I'm back. <coughs> and I'm coughing. I may have Camino cough. I may have brought it back with me, along with bed bugs. No, that never happens. Anyways, folks, today we'll be looking at 10. That's right, 10, and possibly a bonus one, of the most epic and most useful shoe drying tips on the planet. Right? Are you ready for this? I know I'm ready for this. Let's do this. Do it. Not do it. Hit it! And we're back. So, not to dilly-dally, let's just jump right in. Yeah, I'm trying something new here. I'm trying to be more... Well, you'll see. But before I jump into these tips, why am I giving you these tips? Because, folks, during my last trip, I hiked through seven days worth of rain. I've seen and experienced things no one should ever be asked to see your experience. We will throw challenges at you, and that's what we signed up for, right? We signed up for challenges. So, anyways, seven days worth of rain. I, it put my feet through experiences I've never experienced before, and my shoes. That's right, even my shoes through experiences that they've, I'm pretty sure. But who's to say, really? I don't know who they were before they were my shoes, but what I'm getting at is, I went through a lot, and doing so, I came up with a lot of great tips, tricks, and hacks. Really useful ones, super useful ones. Original, new tips that you can share with your friends, or just impress your friends with. Oh, wow. Wow. So why do we want dry shoes? One, odor. Wet shoes stink. No, but wet shoes do stink, and it can stink. So you want to keep your feet dry to prevent shoe stinkage, however... As pilgrims, it's almost expected of us to stink. <laughs> Cleanliness is close to... What is it? Godliness! Hey. So odor. It fights odor. Very important when living in close quarters with everyone else. Granted, they're going to be on the shoes rack with all the other shoes, but at least yours are going to smell great. Two, foot fungus. The whole reason why you brought those extra pair of sandals to wear in the shower and maybe off trail is to keep away the athlete's foot and other foot fungus that you can get in the shower in most moist there I said it. places. Foot fungus. And, and, you know, in jungle rot. There, there are all different names for this, like boot rot, jungle boot rot, fu funky fungus. What's wrong with you? So you want to keep your feet dry for those reasons as well. Next, blisters. Blisters are caused by wet shoes and wet socks. Yeah, believe it or not, have I already said that? Believe it or not, water causes friction, or in this case, wet socks and wet shoes cause friction on your tender, softening feet. You don't want that either. The softened foot, not a good look. Not only is it not a good look, it's just not softened in a good way, if you will. Not like pedicure way. It's more like that been sitting in the bath too long, soft. And when they're soft like that, you get macerations, micro cuts, anything like, like that can, you know, uh, be an open door to infection. And again, fungus. Another reason, cold feet the next morning. Remember, you're going to be starting off early in the morning. Well, most of you will be. Some of you like to sleep in. But you can only sleep in so long before they kick your butt out of there. This is just a free app. So, you don't want to start off with cold, wet feet the next morning. There's a couple ways around that. There's a couple workarounds if you have to. But hopefully by the end of this video, you're not going to... Actually, I don't even say hopefully. I know. If you follow any one of these tips, you're going to have dry feet the next day. Another reason, excess weight. The whole time we're planning and plotting for our trip, we're trying to keep the weight down. At least some of us are, not all of us. Hey, I got things to test out. But you're trying to keep the weight down. There's nothing that adds more weight than excess moisture in water. So you don't want those soppy, wet, heavy shoes. And possibly socks. Because even if your socks are dry, you can stick them in wet shoes. Do I need to explain this? Really? They get wet. And that adds weight. So you don't want that sloppy, floppy, clumsy shoes early in the morning. And plus, cold feet. Unless you're using merino socks, which will retain heat even though they're wet. You're starting off like that, not a good feeling at all. 
right? Doesn't even sound good. Then there is decreased support. Also with that comes shoe fail or gear fail. Like your art support, if you're not using aftermarket insoles, might fail as well. So, and you can also destroy your shoes, which I think I did. Either, I think with a combination of the weather, wasn't used to this. Norte is a lot wetter and it takes a longer time to dry things on the Norte in the spring and the summer. Keep that in mind. On the Frances, if you only done the Frances and you know how things dry in Spain, you only know how things dry in Spain on the Frances because on the Norte, stuff took longer to dry if it dried at all. So bear that in mind. What was I talking about? Shoe fail. Yeah, so I think I, I had part to do with that by using experimental techniques to dry my shoes fast the next day and also the wear and tear of the Norte and the Primitivo. Those are hard roots. So wet, damp shoes, causing the adhesive to fail, the leather, whatever the case may be, and you're you're kicking their butts every day on these trails. And lastly, but not leastly, is reduced comfort. You know, it's we, we again we know going in that we're up for a challenge, or it's going to be a challenge, and we're up for that. Whatever order that's in, you can sort that out after the fact. You want to be comfortable as long as you possibly can, and we typically train to stay comfortable, but also we buy or invest in the proper gear to stay comfortable. Because if you're comfortable, you're having a better time. Unless you're into that. Then you might be. Sigil. Okay, so we got through that. Those are reasons why you want to keep your shoes dry and help your shoes stay dry and dry your shoes dry. <laughs> Number one. First and foremost, what you want to do is remove your laces. You don't see people doing this often, but remove your laces. Remove your laces and take out your inner soles. Often the insoles, you'll see people like just dangle them out like tongues almost. They'll leave them inside the shoe, but just dangling out to let it breathe a little. You need to take them out all the way. Take the laces off. Take the soles out all the way. Why? Because airflow. You want to set your shoes up to win, not to fail in any way, shape, or form. So you want to increase the airflow. And I know it sounds like a small thing, but it's a big thing, especially if those are cotton laces. Depending on what the material is made out in those laces. That said, if they're lock laces, congratulations, you're a Camino genius. Leave those bad boys in. But if they're regular traditional laces, take those out. Take those out and take the inner soles out. Inner soles you can have to the side. Best not touching the shoes at all, but depends on what your space is. Maybe you can just put them on top of the shoes. Those are made out of foam and wicking materials already. The inner soles we're talking about. So those will dry in roughly maybe two hours in the wettest conditions, the most humid conditions. So you don't even really need to worry about them. So laces off, inner soles out. Or insoles. I say inner soles. But getting everything off and out of the way just makes it much easier for the shoe to dry. It's a lot like opening a window in the sauna. You know what I mean? Do I know what I mean? Have I ever been in the sauna? Number two, the classic. That's right, folks. The newspaper hack. This is so old school, it's not even funny. Unless you're looking at the funny pages, I don't know. First, however, newspaper. It's... It's not always at the albergue, but a lot of the time, be sure to look. If you walk into the albergue, usually the first place you're led to, if not your bunk, is the shoe rack. They want you to take those shoes off ASAP, especially if you're walking out of the rain. And you will be taken, again, to a shoe rack. Near the shoe rack, sometimes, or even on the shoe rack, you'll see a stack of newspaper. No, it's not recycling. It's for this. Dry your shoes. So if there's a huge stack, awesome. You can just you can play around with that. You can wrap your insoles in that, actually, if you wanted to, like an envelope. Just, you know, little bits and pieces of it. Conserve it. People need to share. But again, if there's an excess amount... Awesome sauce. If they don't have any there, and, and that'll happen too, especially if you're getting a lot of rain on the Camino, that means pilgrims are using a lot of newspaper more than people can keep up with. So that might not be supplied. But knowing this, walking in... If you're like me, before I get to the albergue or wherever I'm staying that night, I typically stop at a supermarket just so I maybe don't have to immediately go out to grab something to eat. I can get some snacks or whatever, just things beforehand. Grab a newspaper too and just stick it in your bag. That way you know walking in there you'll have it. And you can probably make some friends too by sharing some of it because you will have some leftover. Or you could just hoard it. Like a hoarder. There's other tips too. I mean, you could... I mean, some of these albergues are attached to restaurants, bars whatnot. If you're in a bar and you see some newspaper on the counter, you maybe you can ask for that if it's or ask them if they have any old newspaper or maybe when they're not looking you can <laughs> no. no 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 don't I would never No but 
You could do that. I wouldn't. But you could. You're capable of that. You're capable of such things. There's also paper towel in the bathroom. Wad that up, stick it in your pockets. The thing is, take note of this, paper towel in the United States is different quality than the paper towel in Spain. And not to say one is better than the other, but when it comes to shoe drying, one is better than the other. The one here in the United States is made out of paper. It pulls in more moisture, I find, than the paper towels in Spain, which are more like what we call Kleenex here. They are so soft and like, Poofy that you could blow your nose on them. In fact, you might find yourself blowing your nose on as well as doing other things with them. Adios. But yes, so that'll work too, but it's not the best. It doesn't really get the job done, so I don't even know if it's worth using that stuff. Newspaper's where it's at. Also, while you're stuffing into your shoes as one would stuff a bocadillo into their backpack, don't compress it so much. You want to tuck it in there so it's making a lot of contact with the material there. Newspaper will absorb one time its own weight. So it will suck in a lot of water there. I recommend, as soon as you get to the albergue, doing this. And then do it one more time before you go to bed that night. To just ensure that you're going to be dry the next day. Especially if you're on the Norte. Again, I might be on the Portuguese as well. If you're nearer the ocean, I feel like that adds more humidity to the air, right? I mean... So that's a newspaper hack. And you'll see a lot of people doing that. That's classic. But there's more. Next! Next, you may be an executive pilgrim. You may not know what that means, so I'll tell you what that means. That means a pilgrim that stays in a private room or a hotel. Uh, these aren't ritzy hotels. They're European hotels, which are typically smaller, but they have everything you need. Sometimes they even have a towel rack. If they have a towel rack, awesome too. You can position your shoes around them, just not directly on them, but you can, like, if there's a chair in the room, hook them over the chair, put that up to the towel rack and rely on some of the heat coming off of that to dry the shoe, and it will. It will, but you just don't want to put it directly on it. Unless maybe there's a towel over it, just to protect them, because radiators and towel racks, especially radiators, hot radiators, don't put your gear on top of the radiator because it can fry your shoes, it can, especially leather. It can turn wet leather into, like, just dry hide. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Dry Hide? It's embarrassing. There's a sweet spot when it comes to drying your stuff with a radiator. But again, not on the radiator. Especially shoes. Especially Gore-Tex shoes. Especially leather shoes. No, no. All sorts of damage. But if you're staying in a hotel or a motel, you can often find a hairdryer in one of the closets in the bedroom. Don't forget to look there. They're not always in the bathroom or in the bathroom. Either on the wall, under the sink, in a drawer. Ask at the desk. But they may have, may have a hairdryer. And if they do, you can use a hairdryer. However, use it on the cold or cool setting, low temperature. Don't use hot. Don't use high hot, especially because for similar reasons like the radiator, that can destroy your shoes. It can also destroy your socks too. Never use a hairdryer on waterproof socks, especially dry miles. They'll blow up like balloons for it's a long story. But you can really destroy the structural integrity of the waterproof dry sock by using a hairdryer in the hot setting or any setting. Do not blow into a waterproof sock with a hairdryer. Not into it. You can blow the outside if it's dangling on a clothesline in your room or whatnot. That's another story, but just a little side tip to that tip. But yes, on a cool setting, blowing air on them, on your shoes, will dry them faster. Do not put the hairdryer all the way in the shoe, though, because you can cause it to overheat. Even if it's not on the hot setting, I find... I kind of destroyed a couple hairdryers. I'm not proud of this, but it did happen. I think I just blew the fuse actually inside... The plug. It's a lot. Sorry. So don't do that. But yeah, you can blast it with a hairdryer if you have the time. Or you can mount the hairdryer and turn it on. That will work. Tip four. No hairdryer. No problem. If you're still staying in a hotel with that single room, maybe they have a fan. In fact, if you're using booking.com, there's often like a little like section where you can attach a note to the place wherever you're renting from or renting the room from. And oftentimes people will just leave that blank. If I'm going that route by using booking and not an albergue, I will just ask for a ventilador or a fan. If they have a fan, please leave it in the room. And if they do, they will. If they don't, they don't. But it's good to ask anyways, because sometimes you need to dry your clothes. And using a fan actually is a great way to dry your clothes. I string, well, you know, if you're subscribing to this channel, which you should be doing, you already know that I just tend to hang lines, clothes lines, that is, everywhere. But again... Works really well, very effective, especially if it's a wet day outside. Dry them inside with the fan. You can also use a chair, push it up to the fan, uh, hook the shoes over it. Just get it close to the fan, get the fan on the shoes. 
it works. It's highly effective and it'll dry them super fast. If you have newspaper on hand or something else, stick that inside. It's like, it's like a, like a two, that's like a two for one tip. That'll actually speed up the process even faster. And the fan will dry the paper that you're using on the inside. So it's constantly, energetically speaking, sucking up moisture and water. Well, folks, this brings us to the end of this week's episode. I hate to cut it short, but due to time constraints, I mean, think about it. I have to. I have to. Otherwise, it would have been like 31 or 32 minutes long, and no one's going to sit still long enough for that. Anyways, next week, epic hacks for sure. Until then, enjoy this puppy. One could be no.